Peace, love, and light, African people. It is the Goddess Sync Night. This is the Blackest Truth. Why take the not so easy topic of racism, white supremacy, break it down and make it easier for us to maneuver through. Today, we have yet another great guest. Today, we will be learning about cryptocurrency, stocks, financial literacy from this king right here, Mbwebe Ishangi. And how are you doing, King? I'm good, sister. Great things, great things. Appreciate you having me. No problem, no problem at all. Thank you for uh, being here. I just want to briefly introduce how I found you. You were someone that were following an Instagram page. Um, and I think a lot of times my audience kind of doesn't really think that I follow. I like look at people that follow me. So a lot of times I'll, I'll have kind of like a day where I bench everyone's profile just to get an idea of who people are, what their what their norms are, who's really tuning in. And I don't know, just because it's a social media age, kind of creepish, you know, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta be, gotta be, yeah, no doubt. Right, right. So while I was creeping on the King's page, I saw what, what business he had, and I was like, oh, I think this is awesome. And I just kept looking into it further, and then I reached out, and now we are here over the course of a month. So uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Just let us know who you are. How did you start? What What's your business? Okay. Um, again, my name is Mboy Uh It's a pleasure to be on this platform with you. Um, especially because I echo the same sentiments of having a message that's specifically to our people. Um, there's not enough of that out there. Um, and it's not, a, you know, I just think it's important that we try to hone in on ourselves um, because we're the only ones going to help us, right? So uh, in general, uh, I, I wear several hats. Um, my background, uh, well, first of all, I'm a lover of African history. Uh, I've, I've been writing since 1993, I started a magazine in 1993 called The Ghetto Times Magazine. Uh, we're in our 27th year. Uh, I've written six books, uh, and I want to do something more than the writing. You know, it's, it's one thing to have information to air to your people, but we need needed some some tangible liquidation of that knowledge and awareness. So, what can we put our hands on to get us in the mode of being able to be, um, you know, self self determined, you know, and do for ourselves. And that kind of led me into, um, I was kind of, well, I worked for the NBA, uh, the National Basketball Association for 12 years as a brand identity uh, marketer. And so I learned all about the tools and trades of what it is like to brand and, and promote and things of that nature. And I just applied those same skills to what I was doing with my works. Uh, but then I was like, again, it was that void of, you know, what can we do financially? What is it that is... Um, why are we in a situation where culturally we're, we're rich, but economically we're not? And we're always talking about when we rise as a people. Well, you know, we've done that. And I didn't want to be part of that next generation that is, is echoing the same sentiments without anything to air to our children other than, again, books. So um, March 17, March 13, 2017, I was abruptly fired from my job at the National Basketball Association. Oh, wow. um, not because of my work ethic, but basically because of my social media posts, my pages. And they were, again, Pat African Center or African Centered. And they obviously felt it didn't fit their brand. And, you know, uh, I was uh, immediately kicked off the corporate plantation. Uh, whereas most people would say, hey, you should fight for your job because that's, you know, that's, you could fight with the EOC. Uh, well, I've been doing trips to Costa Rica. I have a property and also a uh, business in Costa Rica that I came back with the sentiments in my mind anyway that, you know, my time is almost up and I was hoping to do it on my own terms, but you know, the ancestors got a way of working with you. <laughs> and so when I came back a week later, I was fired from my job, but instead of fighting for the job, I figured, you know, what I should be doing is stepping out into what I'm supposed to be doing. So the question I always ask people, especially with my clients is, what would you do if you showed up on a Monday and you were immediately let go? What would be the first thing you think about? You know, the first thing you think about is your finances, right? How am I going to be able to pay my bills? How am I going to be able to, you know, where am I going to get my money sourced now, right? Mm -hmm. And that was what I went through. And immediately I, I, re I rem remembered I had a 401k that I've been using and I've been dumping money into. Uh, and that was the first source I went to. Um, long story short, I met with my broker. He happened to be also a lump from the same university as I went to the University of Pittsburgh. And he started divulging information to me that he normally doesn't do. He started telling me about the cyclical system of, of, of recessions and how they happen every 10 to 12 years, which we're kind of in right now, and how that affects your money. 
And then also uh, in the process of me wanting to pull money out of my 401k, because you do get taxed up to five times if you're under 59 and a half, that uh, I realized I was going to get taxed, but I also realized that I needed the money. So when it came time for me to apply, I had to put in my, uh, my basically was my occupation. I said, well, you know, I can't put down that I don't have a job. She said, you're right. This is where it changed for me. He said, put down that you live off your savings and investments. And when he said that to me, my mind just, just exploded because I never thought that a person could just say, I live off my savings and investments. That changed the whole paradigm about how I saw and thought about money. And from then on, I started looking into financial literacy. I started doing the DIY era, looking up the videos, reading the books, and understanding that there are practices that rich people have done um, and that educational systems and banking systems will not share to the average person because if you were empowered, you'd have no use for them. Mm -hmm. So that got me to understanding the whole concept of what financial literacy is, which is taboo in our community. We don't want to talk about money. If we do talk about money, it's ending up usually in a fight because homeboy you know, owe me $20 from three years ago. So we end up scrapping over something you know, that has nothing to do with nothing, anything. Right. So it was really about understanding the principles of financial literacy and applying that, and again, with the motive of living off your, fi your, your savings and investments. Um, I could go on and on and on, but if you know, if you want to cut in, that's cool. But I'll, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, it's, it's a long tread. But you know, yeah, you, know. you could t tell us the beginning of your actual business that you're doing right now. What what exactly did you plan to uh, incorporate into the membership? Okay, so when I started, um, I've always been an advocate of trying to network with our people and wake us up, so to speak. Right, had that conversation of doing something different again, self determined, and. Uh, when I learned about finances, the first thing I was exposed to was cryptocurrency. Now, I'm not going to sit here and parade about how great cryptocurrency is because right now it's being regulated. You really can't do nothing much, much with it. So I'm not really promoting that as such, but I started out that way. I started out as crypto woke. And um, I was, you know, got so in, in, in depth about learning about cryptocurrency. I learned about blockchain technology. I learned about how to build rigs and do your own mining. I was mining Ethereum. Uh, so I knew I, I pretty much jumped in head first on understanding the whole pop process of creating digital currency. But again, with the regulations, uh, with the US regulations, it's, it's kind of slowed the pace of the adoption around the country and especially around the world. So it's more of a long-term, uh, I would say investment. But what I also realized is, okay, I need money now. So what practices can I do right now? So that's why I started reading books about you know financial literacy and and then just putting things together i studied the nature of banks and the relationship between us and banks and how historically people of african descent uh united states have been uh deprived simply because of of our color and uh, nothing more than that uh, so we get the highest you know we get the highest interest rates we get the we pay more in service fees and we actually suffer the most in crisis and that's what it hit me i realized i realized that there's a saying if you don't design your own life plan, chances are you'll fall into someone else's plan. And right. guess what they plan for you? Not much. Right. So and this is all about thinking about what to do. So me being a writer, me being wanting to share information anyway, I started thinking I need to share this information as well. And that's where it came into creating the Crypto World Financial Sustainability Movement, which is the parent company where it's a movement of people of like-minded that are in a position uh, financially to be sustainable it's not about being rich it's about being sustainable first when you have all your bills paid for and you know how to do it and it's your own source through passive income then you're sustainable then anything else you make is extra so I'm not saying let's get rich first let's get sustainable and then when you're sustainable now we can work to the platform of creating intergenerational wealth or we can do cooperatives where we can bring ourselves together and say there's a project on the, on the table well all the need to say 10k well we're all in a position to do that. Let's put down 100. Let's put down, you know, 500 and start doing things on a collective perspective. That sounds beautiful. That I feel like that's what we're, what we're missing. I remember a couple of years ago, I was in an organization and we were looking to purchase some land. You know, when you're connected to various Black persons, occasionally y'all do start moving and discussing how to take it further, right? So mm -hmm. every now and then you could start working with a group of black folks that are, are ready to put the wheels on the pavement. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, we, we had a couple of people in the group that were talking about this land. It was gonna be this much um, 
we would be able to do X, Y, and Z on it. So finally, um, when we came to asking, okay, so how much is it? She was just kind of like $500. And I, I always think of black folks as kind of like, and it's not, it's on anything for everyone. You're going to have the initial bulk response where everybody's going to like and say they, they are part of it and going to be down. Yep. Then you're going to have those who show up. Yep. You're going to have those who pay in. These are, these are three different groups and they're going to get smaller and smaller each one. Am I lying? Facts. Facts. Okay, so um, when it came down to actually receiving the money, she was really upset that a lot of us didn't have it. Now, um, I'm someone who's extremely practical. I like to give practical, practical um, instruments, tools, just because we're, we're living in a real world. So I just posed the question. Most of these folks, most of us don't even have $500 for ourselves, sis. Yep. So now you're asking for $500 in a matter of two weeks. You ain't even giving us two months. It's kind of like, you really just set yourself up for failure right here. Like if we could be honest, you kind of just set yourself up. <laughs> yeah. so. That's, that's something that uh, I, I walk the same uh, route. Um, I have another company called the Wind Natural and, and we've done trips to Costa Rica and we took our people there purposely to say, Hey, look and see what's here because you know, we're facing gentrification in major urban. I'm in Brooklyn, New York, so, you know, Brooklyn is not what it used to be. And it's going to continue in that way. And all the urban cities are like that. So where are we going to, because we're getting pushed out. So where are we going to go? So our thought was, you know, let's go and look, not just domestically, let's go outside of the borders of this country and see what else is out there, and particularly warm climates, where um, also we have trade and skills that we could bring as a bartering system to the natives. And so when we went to Costa Rica, we've been going for the, since 2012, um, taking groups there and, and you know, <laughs> we'd have land opportunities because, the, you know, the, the locals are like, look, all these foreigners are coming here and taking the money, taking the land from us, and we'd rather keep it in the family. We can't keep it in our bloodline. We want to keep it in our family. And they were willing to sell that land to us. So we would present this to our people. And again, we go through the same three categories. Everybody's like, yeah, I'm down. I'm liking it. I'm going to come to the meetings. Da, da, da. When it comes down to putting the money down, everybody had excuses and reasons. And I was like, okay, I understand because I'm the same boat, but how do we move beyond that? So that's where I think the financial literacy piece comes in is we need to learn how we can use other people's money. Mm -hmm. Because the problem is we think the only way to gain wealth we've been taught is to put it in a savings account, which gives you less than 1% interest, right? So right. we think if I put my nickels and dimes together, then in 30 years, I'll have enough to get whatever. Well, things appreciate in value, so you'll never catch up. So right. the thing really is thinking about is what other methods and mechanisms are people of wealth doing? We don't have to, you know, that's the other thing too, is, is the learning curve. Um, the system that is, we're part of this educational system has teach, taught us to be worker bees. So we've never thought about working for ourselves. We're conditioned to work for someone else that's gonna give you a paycheck. Mm -hmm. We never figured out the sacrifice that we need to do. If we did it for ourselves initially, that we'd be better off later by putting ourselves together, just putting in the work, doing the research, doing the knowledge, and then executing what you learn. So this is where I think is what financial literacy comes, and this is what I add into my course and what I teach my, my clients, is that the biggest thing that we need to do is understand what money is, how it works, how other people use, use money, how they use our money, for instance, when you put your money in a bank account, there's this thing called the fractional lending system. When you put your money, every deposit you put in the banking account, the bank gets to 10X that deposit. So if you put $1,000 in your banking account, the bank automatically turns that into $10,000. They only have to keep that $1,000 deposit on their books. So they got $9,000 free dollars based upon your seed money that they use to now loan out to any and everybody, to developers, to, you know, this is why we got gentrification, mm -hmm. all these different components, they now can add on an interest rate to that loan. So they're receiving a dividend from that loan that they gave out, but we gave the C money. And guess how much money we get from that? Zero. Right, right. Get so the difference is, is how do we then switch the way we think into becoming banks? We can do the very same thing they're doing, maybe not on a larger scale initially, but we can do the same practices. And as you, as you implement those practices, they compound in growth over the years. And when you get to that point, now we can start bringing in the ideology philosophies of Marcus Garvey, 
where I think he's the only one that's really get put out a platform where finances was locked in on our self de uh, defining ourselves. So if we was to, to bring in that financial component, not saying give me a tithe, donate 20 bucks, no. Get your credit right, get your profile right, learn how to leverage and use that money and spend other people's money to get the things you need. Now that you're sustainable, now we're in a position where we can scale. I, now I can help my sister, I can help my immediate cousins, immediate family, now let's help the neighborhood. The, month, the one thing I talk about when it comes to uh, the banking industry is I think, you know, when they say you point, point, point the finger at somebody, you got three point right back at you, right. is that we are actually co-conspirators unknowingly of our gentrification. Because again, when we put money in those banks, those banks are in our neighborhoods. And those banks 10x that, and they're the ones that brings in the developers from outside of our community to take it over. Right. So it, it's kind of like Brooklyn, they can have it. <laughs> you know, they can have Brooklyn, but we can supplant ourselves and go anywhere right. you know I mean, we have the capability especially if we use the cooperative model of doing for self learning how to to cultivate the land trap water uh get into glamping or getting into uh, uh car shipping car containers homes and, and small homes and growing gardens and monetizing the land because that's the other thing it's not about having a portfolio of all this money you need to train you need to turn it into something tangible something I can put my hands on. And the best thing that you can buy that is, is it appreciates in value is land. So again, that brings us back to that conversation of if we can get ourselves in a situation where everybody's right, then that person that's asking for $500, we can give you a thousand. Right. No. So let me ask you with that being said, because one of the things I was actually just speaking to a brother this morning on being able to introduce um, teaching for a military weaponry and um arm like arms mm -hmm. so many of us we we know we should be trained in arms but we just kind of like don't know where to start we don't even have the extra money for the things that we do need in life so then figuring out how we're going to get even extra money to buy some of these things can become overwhelming so like as as me and this brother this morning we're talking about what can we bring to the Black is Truth membership that people can hold on to. One of the things that I'm truly, truly passionate about is, um, like you said, tangibles, practicality, taking people from one area of their life to the next area of their life. Like, I can't really say all of these things about melanin if I can't validate it about melanin. If I say we can float and we can glow in the dark, I got to, and to me, I got to be able to have somebody that's glowing in the dark because they have melanin. If I can't show you that, I'm not going to say melanin can make us glow in the dark. Right. So, <laughs> you, I know I'm, I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating. Nice. Nice. But what I'm getting at is the membership, one of the reasons why I'm passionate about it is because I want Black people to be able to see a transformation in their life. So from learning about money and investments, from learning about credit, from learning uh, about self-healing, just from being able to watch people interact socially. Um, we have like a cooking show that we're about to bring out as far as a brother who does his own cooking and getting all of that behind the scenes wrapped up. What exactly could, or let me ask, could someone... Let's just say we have three people in the membership who are, are three people that are interested in, in going off and buying their own land and are, are saying, you know, this is a whole life that I see for myself. I see me commuting to a place with a group of like-minded individuals. Would, would what you're bringing to the membership, would it be able to take somebody in the very beginning who don't know nothing about a land, what a land bought, if they need to go on Google or Craigslist? Yeah. Could you take somebody from there own it absolutely could and the reason why i say it is because before as i mentioned before we were just going out outright buying land that was the key thing that was missing was the financial literacy piece so in the course that i teach um one of the first things i ask you is uh you know your goals what are some things you want to own what are things you'd like to have um beyond the the, the usual i want to have a nice car or a nice house Think big. Would you like to own an island? Would you like to own a yacht? Things of that nature. And it's okay to think big because now you can start to figure, okay, once you put these things and implement these things in, into place, it can actually happen. So the stages I would take them through, again, is to get them to a point where personally their credit is good, their debt is, is managed because debt's never paid off. So their debt is managed 
and they're in a position where they have a cash flow that allows them to fire their boss if they want to. And interestingly enough, you know, if you do have a job, right, if you do have a job, you got to you gotta give them two weeks notice, but they could fire you on the spot, right? Don't do so it. Want, Don't do it. <laughs> right? So, so we want to empower them to a position because at the crux of everything in this capitalistic world we live in is finances. So we need to deal with that piece first before we can do anything because now there's no excuse. If, you're, if your portfolio is looking stellar or even to a point where you can afford to invest in something, then there's no excuse for you to say, not you, you don't want to do this, especially when you get with like-minded people that understand the importance of creating intentional communities. So I've already done the work in creating the, the platform for transporting people, not only to Costa Rica, but to Panama, Nicaragua, um, and even in other parts of the Caribbean. And then I also have aspirations of things in, in, in Senegal and in other parts, of, you know, and even in Kemet. I'm working on a part of an excavation project with Anthony Browder. We're doing excavation of, of Egyptian tombs, comedic, tw you know, 2,000 year old, 20,000 year old tombs um, that we are excavating and bringing, not 20,000, 2,000. <laughs> but bottom line is that we're reclaiming globally and it requires finances, right? First, you got to take the trip. Then you gotta, you know, you gotta be able to have, not only take, pay for the trip, you gotta pay for your bills while you're gone, all these types of things. So, if you get yourself in a position where you know how to manage your expenses, and then you also have compounded interest on the investments you have that are coming in, so you know I'm paying myself. My money is employed. I'm not employed. I'm working for my money. My money works for me, and I've learned how to do this. And you can learn it through the Crypto World Financial Sustainability Movement class. Mm -hmm. Is that you're in a position to then say, hey. Not only am I going to buy land for myself, I can buy land for 70, I can start thinking 70 years into the future. Because this is what rich folk do. They think right. 70 years in the future, you um, wonder how people have bar mitts for money? It's because they put money away in a certain situation that allows it to compound an interest, not putting $10 in their savings account and hoping that it, you know, it'll just blow up into something they can retire on or hoping that a 401k will be enough for you to survive on when we know the 401k is, is tacked to is attached to the market and when the market is bad so is your money tanking you know a lot of people lost money in this last month because of this plague so right. we can't put our monies our retirement monies our precious monies that we will need when we're no longer employable and that's the other thing i want to say i know i'm running a lot but um I, this thing i learned from my job when i got paid when i got laid off no employer is obligated to pay you for the rest of your life mm. one day you're either going to get laid off or fired and hopefully retire. But in either situation, there's an expiration date of them giving you money, which you then use to pay for your expenses. Right. So if you're in your 50s or 60s, and, or if you're 65, and you get laid off or fired, or because your tenure doesn't matter anymore, it doesn't matter how much tenure you have, if you get laid off and you don't have ability to pay for your bills, where are you gonna pull that money from? The 401k you thought was gonna be there for you? Well, it's getting this tank because of the market. So where are you going to get this money from? And this is why people have debt compounded upon debt because we don't understand how to build our money and employ it. So I've learned ways to do it. I'm a walking, I won't say guinea pig because I'm not a pig, but you know, I'm, right. I'm the best kind of- you know, a, You're a walking example. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, put these things into place and, then, and I'm not deviating from the plan. I'm not going to add something or take away something. Follow the same plan that rich folk do and you will be in that same position. And that's what I implore with anybody that I want, that works with me is if we do these type of things in a few years, if, if not less, we could be in a position where, hey, I got land in various parts around the country and I can go to any of these places in case stuff go crazy here, I need to leave. Where can I go? You know what I mean? So it really is about having these things in place because the world is changing, it's more global than ever. And we have skill sets that a lot of our people in other areas would relish on. And in turn, they could teach us the old ways we forgot, you know, using about medicinal herbs and how to cultivate land and things of that nature. So there's an even trade there. And um, I've been blessed to work with and have some beautiful partners that I work with that we've had that set up. So yeah, I could definitely take someone to answer your question long-winded is I could definitely take someone from that position of wanting to buy land and actually doing it. Right. Beautiful, beautiful. I love to hear it. So family, just to let you all know what exactly are we talking about, um, 
as you all know, or as I hope you all would know if you're a new subscriber, hey, if not, then you should have already heard about TBT Gang. This is our private membership because um, I want to focus more on what I teach and, mm -hmm. and, and just focus on the science and bringing you all content about that. I figured, I was trying to figure out how to create a niche or a network of people that all have a, a passion that they can give 100% to. And from there, it was really trying to figure out how to bring it all to one place. Because the reality is, is although we do talk about racism, white supremacy, we know it exists. It's not something that can just be dismantled in a day. We're talking about a, a monstrous system that needs some, some real organization and strategy applied to it if we're going to be effective. So in the midst of all of that, what can we do? And this is what, I, what I'm passionate about with TBC Gang. I want to connect the right people that can help us get our finances together, that can help us get our psychology together, that can help us get uh, the frustrations. Um, even reaching out to a queen who does some work out in the UK, I'm real, I really, really love what she does. Um, she focuses on holistic health. If you've been through traumatic experiences, what can you incorporate uh, socially on your on a weekly basis to help you deal with that? And I think that's important. Um, working with someone to help us grow our own gardens and learn about compost, all of these are crucial pieces of the puzzle in order to create the lifestyle, like where we currently are versus who we need to become is what I'm trying to accomplish with TBT Gang. So not only having you, Brother Ishangi, and having you bring your talent, but also scouting and vetting for more people to bring their talent so this could just be a huge network that we can access we can learn african language if you want to learn swahili one day yoruba the next day wall off the next day you can learn it here if you want to learn about financial literacy and learn about land today and learn about stocks tomorrow this is a membership that you want to tune into so one i appreciate you brother for being for seeing the vision that's what I say. I appreciate you for being in the very beginning, <laughs> for seeing the vision, <laughs> because the goal is definitely to partner with more Black people that have a Pan-Africanist mindset, that understand that our people need our help, and it got to be made, it got to be made more practical. All of this, we need to do this, and we need to do this. Yeah. <laughs> We can't. We gotta stop that cycle. We gotta stop stop that cycle because it's it's it's. We have children that are now looking at us and like, okay, I, I see the books, but okay, what else? You know what I mean? Right. That's how that's how I was, and I'm like, you know, so I can't repeat that same thing. Mm -hmm. We need to step it up because the world is moving on without us, and that's the other part is that it is and it's it's into our it behooves us to do it because if we don't then we want to talk about how bad we are. Even uh, uh, Andrew Yang talked about how our purchasing power could be down to zero network within the next 30 years because of AI. You know, if, if we understand that, you know, we have a $1.4 trillion spending power right now, although we are 99% consumer, 1% producer because we don't own anything, we don't create or produce anything, that 99% is going to be taken away because artificial intelligence is going to take over the jobs that we have. So if we don't have the jobs and we don't have the spending power, if we don't have the spending power, then what's left for us? You know, people are going to do petty thefts just to, just to survive. And we know what the prison industrial complex is set for. So it's inevitable if we stay on this pace of not doing and hoping that someone will or some mystery God will come and make it right. right. <laughs> uh, we need to self-determine. And it doesn't take much. And it is legal still to self-determine. And do for yourself by learning a trade, doing what Booker T. Washington talked about against W.B. Du Bois. Is it ain't about the certifications. It's about having the skill so that you can basically take care of your basics, your food, clothing, and shelter. When you can do those three things, then you can start bartering if we were to lose money. If you, you can trade seeds. You can trade skills. But if we're not thinking on that platform, um, our, our future is in peril. Right. You know? So we have to think about that. Right. And I'm glad you said that because it, it made me think that we got to start seeing these things as life or death. I nice. think we, we treat them too casually, right? Like this has to be a matter of life or death from a, for us. So one, I just want to thank you. I, I want to thank you for not only being an author and spending your years doing that, but also 
taking that, that step of courage to start your, your own business and remain consistent in it because it's easy to get frustrated. It's easy to allow the times just to be like a shore and let that water come up and everything you work for could just in a day, in a month, in a year. It's easy to let that happen. So I'm always really proud when I see black businesses that are weathering a storm because it's difficult. It's hard <laughs> and it's work with your people. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It is very difficult to work with your people and also still being one of your people, right? Like still also knowing you got show things and it's like, I wish I couldn't, I didn't have to do this, but I don't know what I, why I do it. I can't stop it. Just bear with me. I'm trying to bear with you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's a lot, but I, I think brothers like yourself and, you know, the, the large majority of our community who is trying to put the work together, who is trying to put the infrastructures together, I encourage you all, um, myself included with my business to just, if we could just give 100% to our craft, I think by default, everything else would just fall into place. So one, thank you for not only doing what you do. Thank you for agreeing to work with the Blackest Truth Private Membership. And after this interview, I want you all to know that you can find this brother in the membership. It is a monthly subscription of $25. And what it is, 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 a, is a huge network. It's a Facebook group where you're getting content from everybody every week. I put my How to Quit Your Job in 730 Days. I released the modules in there. Content that nobody's ever seen from my page will be in there. Content that you'll, you'll never see anywhere else from his page will be in this in this group and then if you're interested in learning more about uh, what he does he has a whole lesson he has his own courses he has his own work um, some of the in the, some of the professionals and the individuals that we're trying to work with right now outside of what they offer to the membership they have more on top of that so that's one of the the main things I said I want to work with specialists someone who don't just got you know, like six months in a game, no disrespect. Everybody got to start somewhere. Everybody got to start somewhere. I just, you know, want someone with a thorough rap sheet. That way, when our people want more, they can supply them with more. Facts. Facts. And so, I thank you, brother. I want to commend you, too, on the, you know, I, I what you mentioned about bringing everybody into one place. It's more of a university type of thing where, you know, it's a community where you can come and get all aspects of things. So, I love that concept that's what we it's absolutely needed because we you know we study 360 degrees so we need to get all those as much as possible and i also would throw out to the audience if you're not familiar study the works of dr francis Cress welsing and neil neely fuller jr that talked about the 10 areas of people activity um you know so there's 10 areas that you know if you want to look at the 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 thought of global white supremacy which is dependency i call it is they base it on 10 areas, and those areas are economics, education, entertainment, labor law, politics, sex, religion, and war, and health was added by Brother Kiti Awudu, I mean Awudu, uh, the conscious Rasta. So these are the 10 areas that we could study, and for me, it's economics and education that I focus on, mm -hmm. and you can pick any of those things nice. that was part of the solution in getting ourselves back into the position of being self-determined. So I, I commend you on this work. I'm excited to work with you. I'm excited to be part of the gang, um, and I look forward to, you know, networking with as many of you all as possible, because I'm here to learn, too. Beautiful, beautiful. Love it, love it. Well, if that is all, brother, I am going to just do my little closeout. TBC gang, to everyone out there, uh, I hope that you are maintaining the best that you can. Hold on, whatever is happening. Um, Life is, is, is a revolution. It's just going to continuously go. Uh, we've been through harder. That's one thing I always like to say. We've been through harder. So it's truly nothing that we can't sustain and withstand. So I wish you all the best of luck out there. Please physically distance and make sure you're remaining safe and not uh, doing too much, too much touching of things. Wash your hands um, and eat whatever it, ever you know can, is growing from this earth eat and consume whatever comes from this earth. Brother, could you close us out if you don't mind? Absolutely, I just wanna um, add to that is yeah, the eating thing is, you know, eating natural foods is, you know, especially now is more than ever. But uh, I just wanted to also just, you know, tell folks, as you mentioned, you know, we've been through this, we've been through worse. Um, the focus is really about persevering. Uh, we have a survival instinct in us anyway, and we're very creative. So 
It's about trying to put yourself in a pocket of positive people and getting a dose of that. It's okay to get some of that negative stuff, but, you know, balance it out. Cause you know, we're going through that cap and fever, all this kind of stuff. But the bottom line is projecting where do you see yourself uh, even three months from now or a month from now, uh, six years from now, start getting in the habit of that. And I use the five hour rule as the way I do it. This is what the rich folks do. They use five hours to dedicate themselves to something they want to specialize in and learn about. For me, it's financial literacy. So I spend a minimum of five hours a week. Now, now it's about more a hundred, but the bottom line is if you want to be a master, something you need 10,000 hours, right? So if you want to learn how to be a good gardener, start up with five hours a week. Go on YouTube, look up some videos, learn how to, I did. I learned how to grow microgreens. So I'm growing microgreens because I realized, well, what happens if the store shut down? Where am I going to get food to feed my family? Right, so right. It's just practical things. We have this time on our hands. Spend a little bit of that time educating yourselves and elevating yourselves and challenging yourselves because our ancestors are depending on that and our future youth are waiting for us to be, to create a platform for them. So I give thanks for the time. And again, I'm excited to work with you all. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Well, if that is all, thank you. Thank you to everyone who is currently watching and is going to go off to watch. I appreciate y'all for thugging it out with us. It is the guy to sneak night. This is the blackest truth until next time, family. See y'all. Yes. Like what you heard today be sure to hit that like button to learn more go to cryptowokemovement.com that's cryptowokemovement.com so you might ask the question what is crypto woke well in the word you might hear that word crypto but i want to be clear the crypto woke financial sustainability movement is not about cryptocurrency what we're talking about when you look at the etymology of the word crypto you find the word cryptic and cryptic actually means hidden so what we're talking about is using cryptic or hidden money methods used by wealthy families over 200 years that has enabled them to continue to make intergenerational wealth. My mission is broken into two phases. Phase one consists of getting 300 people financially literate on the path of sustainability. And phase two is to move those 300 people towards physical and virtual cooperative communities, creating intergenerational, economic, ecological and cultural resuscitation and preservation by way of joint endeavors. Now, what does that mean? That basically means if I can get my money situation right and you have your money situation right, instead of buying a home, we can buy a block. Instead of starting a small local business, we can create an enterprise on a global level. I will be posting more videos on financial literacy. So if you like this type of information, be sure to subscribe. If you like today's video, hit that like button. And also be sure to hit that bell so you'll be notified when I post new videos up. So join the movement, the Crypto Woke Financial Sustainability Movement, where you can live the life of your choosing, living off your savings and investments. Change not only your future, but your bloodlines.